I just wanted to say hi to everyone. Um, this is going to be a live tutorial on how to make one of two types of pouches. One is the, is the one that the Fat Quarter Shop did on one of their tutorials. The second is an adaptation of that, which is similar to the... Um, hi everyone. It's similar to the pencil case from the Biani pattern, which is a free PDF download. Mine is going to be slightly different, but I thought I would just go through and show you what I've been up to. Um, today's project is being made from some beautiful fabric that Jo and her, I can't remember the other lady that works with her now, I really apologise. Um, they sent me some really, really beautiful um, Tudor Pink Daydreamer fabric um, to showcase in one of my makes. Um, so they sent me the Mick Jaguar and the one with the rainbow, the Tudor Sunrise, I believe it is. Um, so I am going to be using the Mick Jaguar, which I have already prepped the panels for, and the one with the rainbows on it. Um, I, so basically the, the options are you can either make a pouch like this, which is flat, or you can make a pouch like this, which is boxier than the previous one with a little handle on it. Um, and they zip open and they are fully lined. So I will be showing you how to, I'll, I'll actually be showing you how to make both. Hi Eddie, I've just got your email and I will reply to you in a little while. Um, so the, basically you make this pouch, which then gets transformed into this pouch. So what you will need is two 10 inch squares, if you're using a directional fabric, what you want to do is make two five and a half inch by ten inch pieces for the outer, if you're using a directional fabric. Um, I'm using a directional fabric for both, so I've done that for both panels. I've, made, I've cut them ten inches by five and a half so that I can put them face to face and do a half inch seam allowance in order to press the seam open, which gives me a ten inch square from Texas high. Um, so I've done that on both of them, so I have created a seam down the centre because they're both directional prints and I want them to be the right way up once the bag is made. Um, you will then need a piece of either fusible fleece, fusible foam or a heavyweight interfacing or medium weight interfacing if you haven't got fleece. I have a whole bolt of fleece because I make a lot of bags. Um, I use the Heat and Bond High Loft Fleece. Um, which is available on Amazon Prime, which is why I get it, because I can get it here really quick when I run out. Um, so what you are going to need as well is a piece of zipper tape. This I have cut about 14 inches long, just so I've got two inches either end to play with. Um, and I've got my zipper pull, which I will put on afterwards. Um, so the first things first is you want to, if you're using a directional fabric, you want to do your put your pieces um, right sides together. You want to create a half inch seam down the side. You want to then get your iron, press that open, which gives you a nice flat seam. Um, and then you want to lay your fusible fleece down with your outer fabric on top. And then you just want to press that in place so that it fuses. I'm just going to quickly lower the camera down just so you can see what I'm doing. So my face will probably get cut off, but you'll be able to see you'll probably be able to see Luna as well peering around because she's stolen my chair. Um, so I'm just going to fuse these two pieces together. So I'm just going to hold the iron on there for a little while just to fuse the heat and bond. Um, if you are if you've never used fleece, it is basically like a very very thick fluffy um, interfacing. Um, I really, really like this one. It seems to give a great stability. Um, you can quilt through it as well, which gives you added dimension, which I will show you in a moment, because that will be the second thing that we do. Um, I just really, really like this particular fleece. I haven't 
I have used Pellon. Um, it's much the same. Uh, and I just find that Pellon just seems to be really, really expensive, depending on where you get it from. To buy a whole bolt of Pellon, you're looking at double the price for a whole bolt of um, heat and bond. So that is the fleece glued onto the back. So that now has given us body to that fabric. Um, my next trick, which some people might not agree with, but I like to use it, is I like to get a glue stick and I like to glue baste these layers together. So I'm going to put some glue on, let's move that out of the way, I'm going to put some glue on my lining fabric. I'm also going to rub a little bit on my fusible fleece back on the outer. I'm going to sandwich them together, making sure that the seams are going in the same direction so that my directional fabrics are going the right way. So I'm just going to press that down gently and then I am going to iron it again, which will dry the glue. You can use, I think in America you have Elmer's glue, which is the equivalent that we have here is what ours is called Pritt Stick. Um, it's made by a company called Bostick. Um, and it is a machine washable glue. Um, I wouldn't recommend using the purple Elmer's just in case the purple in it. I know it is disappearing, um, but I wouldn't want to chance the fact that it might mark the fabric. Whereas the Pritstick original or the clear school glue would work fine too. Um, so that basically creates you a little quilt sandwich and that just holds the lining fabric in place. So I'm just going to quickly shift everything around and bring you over. Let me unplug the iron before I set my house on fire. I'm just going to quickly bring you round to the machine, which is where we will finish the rest of the bag. Um, so I'm going to drop that down. So we have the outer fabric, which you can see better now. So we've got Mick Jaguar. We've got him going in both directions because that will be the bottom of the bag. Um, I've got the lining which is also directional so I've put those in that way. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to really really quickly select, no not, I'm going to quickly pop my quilting guide in to the back of my foot on my machine and I am going to quilt some two inch lines, mm, two inch, no let's go for one inch. I'm going to quilt some one inch lines across this piece of fabric which just stops the two pieces of fabric shifting if the glue gives up. So I'm going to start on the one end and work my way across. I'm stitching down the fabric rather than across, uh, which I'll show you once I've done this first line. So I'm going to put the whisper in here. I've got my jewel feed put on just to give the fabric um, an even feed. Anything that I've used in this video today, I will write in the description box afterwards and I will tell you the measurements of what I'm using for this particular bag. The only thing I will say is you can make this any size you like really. I wouldn't really go for anything smaller than this because it would be really tricky. Uh, I think it would just be really fiddly. Um, so I wouldn't really go any smaller than this, but if you wanted to make a bigger one, I don't see why you couldn't. You could probably, you could even double the size. Um, I would say, try and keep the measurements fairly even, because it just makes your life easier. Right, so, this, I'm just going to whisper in this. So I have started making quite a few of these today. I've made, I think, four already, um, and I've mailed a couple out to friends. They are great for little handbag, makeup bags. They're good for putting your sewing tools in. Um, they're just cute little bags, and you get to use your beautiful fabrics to make them with, and you also get to 
use small amounts of your favourite fabrics so that it's not as scary because you're not using huge amounts in one go like when I made my shirt at the weekend. Um, which did terrify me because I thought to myself, I'm cutting up nearly three metres of tulip pink and if it goes wrong, then I'll probably cry, but it didn't go wrong. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I've put a picture up of that on my Instagram. I will also be featuring it in this week's Friday so so you can actually have a look at it properly. Um, last line before I, so I can finish waff, um, waffling on. So the other thing you'll need as well to make this is some binding fabric. The strips that I've cut are six inches long by two and a quarter inches wide. I've then pressed them in half um, and I've just, I've just picked a plain neutral green. So I've pressed those in half um, and we'll come on to those later. Right, so let me take my quilting guide out of here now because I don't need that. Chuck it in there. I'm going to tighten up that screw on the back of it because otherwise they fall out. So I am now going to change my foot from a 97 quarter inch foot to a 4D, which is the um, dual feed zipper foot on the um, Benina. I'm going to have to take my straight stitch plate off as well because otherwise I will end up breaking my needle. Let's put my 9mm plate back on. Um, that's that. Change the foot to a 4D so that I don't go through the foot. and move the needle over to the far left position. Just because I'm lazy and it means that I can position the slip really easily. Right, so, those are my quilted lines on the fabric um, and it just bonds all of those layers together and it's really pretty. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly snip off those loose threads at the ends because otherwise they will end up hanging out. Um, the next thing we're going to do is attach the zipper. So what you want to do with the zip, if you haven't got um, zip by the meter, you can, let me just double check the chat to make sure that I'm not missing anything. If you haven't got zip by the meter, um, you can use an extra long zip. Um, I have got zip by the meter, so I'm just going to use that. And I've bought tons of it because I really, really like this striped um, zip because I think it works really well with Tudor's fabrics. So, if you haven't, you can use a really, really long zip. And what I would suggest doing, if you're using a really long zip that's not open-ended, I would stitch. When you apply your zip, make sure your end that will open is right at the top so that when you come to the next part of it, you've got all of that extra to actually open this out flat again because you will need to be able to open this out flat. So as long as you can, ex as long as your zip extends the base of it enough that you can open the piece out flat, then you're perfect. I'm not gonna use this one though because I don't like how small the tab is on it. Um, so I'm gonna throw that one over there in a minute. Right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put my fabric, I'm gonna put my outer, good sides together on the zip um, I'm gonna leave I'm only gonna leave about an inch at the top because I don't need loads of overhang I mean I could just put it back in the middle it's not really an issue whichever um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stitch down my f um, my outer fabric onto the outer of the zip but I'm gonna leave just a quarter of an inch of zipper tape overhang and I'm going to stitch from that point all the way down to the end. Making sure that I keep a quarter of an inch. It might be helpful if when you're actually pressing the presser foot that you press the one for the right machine, not the one that's sat on the table next to it. So I'm going to pop that zip in, leaving about a quarter of an inch overhang with zipper tape and I will show you why in two seconds. So once that is in, I'm going to back stitch there, cut your threads. So there is the first part of the zip on there. So the reason why you want an overhang here is because when you fold your zip back, 
your zipper tape will then cover any raw edges on the inside. So what I'm going to do now is lay that down and stitch right as close to the edge of that zipper tape as I can get. So that I'm going to lay that zipper tape down flat and I'll get a lovely top stitch on the outside. Just going to help guide that through. So just stitch along that edge of the zipper tape which will enclose all of your raw edges. So here we go, down to the end. Gonna back stitch and cut my threads. So what that does then is it lays your zip completely flat down on the inside. And let me just trim off some of these threads because I've got a million threads where I've done the quilt and I didn't trim them all properly. Trim off these threads. Mm, there's another one there. Right, so it, which what it means is on the outside you then have your top stitching on the inside your zip is laying completely flat you've got no raw edge either side because you've already previously quilted your fabric um eddie i don't use a matching thread ever really unless it's a garment if it's a bag or if it's something like an accessory i tend to use a contrast because i like to see the different color on there so this i'm using um orophil 2 uh, 2835 which is this colour which is like a mint um, and I'm using that in a 40 weight purely because I like the contrast that you get on there and it sort of mimics the colour of the inside as well um, but most of my bags like this one yesterday I made for a friend this I used a silver sort of grey kind of colour because it picks up the sort of grey silvery tone of that one there so that's laid that down flat. What I'm going to do now is, no, I'm not going to open that up actually, that's stupid. I'm going to lay the other side. I'm going to, so what I've done is I'm going to bring the outer fabric, the good sides together and lay that across this side of the zip, which will then allow me to do the same thing. So I'm just going to apply the zip to the, other edge leaving an overhang of a quarter, of a quarter of an inch to an eighth well, an eighth to a quarter of an inch sorry making sure that I line it up nice and straight if you don't like putting zips in and you worry about them straying you can pin it you can clip it or you can use wonder tape it's Whatever you feel comfortable using, um, I've used, did I catch all of that? No, I didn't. Let me go in a bit further. Uh, you can use Wonder Tape, as I was saying. Wonder Tape is great for zips. Um, the reason why I like these zips as well is because the actual tape of the zip is really, really wide. So between the teeth and the outer part, you've got a lot of space to work with here. Um, so what I'm going to do now is split my zip open. This is why I like using by the meter zipper because you can lay something completely flat. Um, so I'm going to fold that other side back now and just top stitch the outer. As I say, if it gets, if it's, if you have issues with it feeding, just try and gently usher the um, the beginning through. Just kind of give it a little bit of a helping hand. Try and tuck any loose threads in because then it's like sweeping dust under a rug. Back stitch at the end, trim the threads. 
Right, so what I'm now left with is the outer, the inner, the zip, which is sewn down both sides. Um, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to line up my zips and I'm going to put my pull on, which these either go on first time or they give me a nightmare. So I've got those on, I've got them fed in and then I grab hold of the zipper tape and pull it down. So that is my zipper on. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this in from the edge a fair amount and then I'm going to pull this through so that it's inside out. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to stick my hand and just pull that down so it's well out of the way at the end. So what I'm going to do is line this up the centre. This is a good thing about using a directional fabric. Inside it gives you that central seam to actually line up the centre of your zip with so you know that it's centralised. Um, you can put a little you can put a little pull handle in, which I'm just going to quickly... This is just literally an off-cut of some Tudor fabric. I folded it in half, pressed it, and then just pressed a centimetre or half an inch, just under half an inch, about three-eighths an inch, in on both sides. I'm just going to quickly top stitch down those four sides just to give me a pull. Yes, again, I'm pressing the press of foot for the Janome, not the Benina, so that's not going to make it work. So I'm just going to quickly whiz down the side of this. Leave my needle in, spin around, go across. Try not to stitch through your finger because there's not really a guard there because you're using a zipper foot like me. Um, this is something you can prep beforehand without a zipper foot. Right, so that is whizzed around all of the edge of that handle so that I've got a, a little pull tab now to put in the end. Um, I'm just going to quickly stick a clip in that just to keep that end together and then I'm going to just quickly finger press this by dragging my nail across it and squishing it as much as I can because then what it does is actually gives you a fold in the fabric. It's a bit like, if you, you know when you fold, if you fold paper and you run your nail down it, you can do the same thing with cotton if you haven't seen that before. So it gives you a good crunch crush 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 the ends right i'm going to switch my plate out um and my foot because i won't be needing the zipper foot anymore so i'm going to put my i'm going to take my zipper foot off i'm going to put my 97d quarter inch foot back on because i'll need the quarter inch in a minute so i'm going to select my plate my foot i'm just going to type in 97d there we go I'm going to clear the previous settings on the needle position and I'm back to the beginning. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tuck this little handle piece in centralised underneath where the zip meets the edge on here. And what I'm going to do now is at a quarter inch I'm going to stitch along here to close off that seam. Yet again, pressing the wrong pedal. I'm not gonna bother back stitching on this because I'm not turning it through yet. Um, I'm gonna put the binding on here, which is gonna have two more rows of stitching, um, which is gonna enclose all of this raw edge. So what I do need is my gigantic scissors, which I'm gonna just trim all of that excess zipper tape off. Um, so that it's flush. Someone is outside the house, which is making loads of noise, which is very inconsiderate. So my binding, I'm going to do on this side before I do the other end. This is six inches long, which gives me half an inch turnover each end. So I'm going to turn half an inch in, fold it back again. So that tucks that end in. I'm then going to put my binding on to the end of the fabric, just in from the edge, so that my quarter inch from the edge of this green binding will be 
inside that original line of stitching. So I'm going to tuck my end in, which I've just done. I'm going to stitch this down on a quarter inch seam allowance. Once I've got a couple of stitches in, I'm just going to fold in the other end, quarter of an inch. So this is my favourite way of doing binding. This is how Bayani does it. Um, and it, when I first saw her do it this way, I just thought to myself, it makes so much more sense. So I'm going to carry on stitching that along and I will show you what it looks like once we've got through that. Right, so that is, so I've attached the binding using a quarter inch seam on the green bit just in from the edge of this. So what this allows me to do now is to turn that up and turn it over to bind that end there. And what I'm going to do now is top stitch across here just to hold that binding down and enclose the end. You can, if you find it tricky to keep the binding in place, you can pin it. Um, you can use a bit of wonder tape on there. You can use a bit of Pritt stick, a bit of fabric glue, whatever you feel will help you. If you also have a long pair of tweezers, or a um, stiletto, you can use it to help feed that binding in evenly. Just don't stitch over the end of your tweezers because you'll break your needle. And what you'll then do is, if you st when you stitch this down, you want to be as close to the edge as you can, but making sure that you still catch it properly. So I'm going to then back stitch at the end, trim my threads. And then I'm just going to go here and just take off anything that's sticking out and just neaten up that end. So what this now allows me to have is a beautifully found end. So you can see on there, there's the top stitching right as close to the edge as I could get it. There's no row of stitching on this bit because it's just inside on the inner fabric because I've missed ever so slightly, but it's still nice and neat. It binds all of that raw edge and it means that um, everything is bound. So I am now going to do the same with the other end. I'm going to stitch that closed. I'm going to make sure my seam, uh, my, um, my zipper tapes meet at the end. Um, and then I'm going to bind this end too. So I'm going to start quarter inch in. This is just basically to base that end closed before you put the binding on. So do that. I'm going to trim off my excess zipper tape, which is done. I'm going to take my other binding strip and I'm going to fold in half an inch, fold it back on itself again, pop it on the end, and I'm just going to apply that piece of binding again. I'm going to tuck the other end in before I get down towards there. Threads. That's not my snippers, that is my tweezers, this is my snippers. This is the only problem about having everything that matches, is you pick up the wrong thing all the time. Trim those threads, right. So I've popped that on, so what I'm going to do now is flip it up and over, and then I'm going to top stitch that edge of that binding down. Using my tweezers to help me get a nice neat finish because you can actually use your tweezers to pull the binding over the edge as you're going along, which just gives you a much more neat and accurate finish on your bag. I mean, to be fair, you're not really gonna see much of this binding. It's gonna be inside the bag, but it stops things getting stuck in the seam. It stops threads coming loose as you use the bag. So that is the 
last piece of binding on there. So what, basically, at this point, once you've bound both your edges, this is at what point, if you turn it through, it will basically be one of these nice little flat ones, which are really cute. This one's made from Tudor Pink Tiny Bees. Um, this is something that Elephant in My Handbag is just about to put on their website. Um, so if you want to make a flat pouch, when you've done the binding, you turn it through, poke the corners out, that is what you are left with. If you want to make the box pouch, this is when we change the way that we do this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull on... Right, hold on, let me think about this. I'm going to push... Right, I'm going to push my finger in the end of that corner. I'm going to pinch it in the corner there. And then I'm going to lay the binding down flat. So what that gives me is a pinched corner. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to put my hand into the flat pouch. I'm going to push that out. And then I'm going to push the binding towards the edge of the fabric. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch across this bit here, one inch in from the point of that corner. And I'm going to do that on all four corners, one inch in. So I'm going to back stitch as well, right up to the edge, because these corners are going to have to have some pressure put on them in order to push the corners out. I've got a, um, I've got a Yorkshire Sogo itchy nose. Every time Ruan goes on camera, she ends up with an itchy nose. I think it's just this stupid weather we're having in the UK at the moment. It's literally like Florida weather. Not that Florida weather is stupid, but it's boiling hot one minute and then we've had these horrific thunderstorms or hailstorms and then it's going again. So I've pushed out that other corner. I'm going to stitch across there one inch and then I'm going to do the other two. trim my threads, clear up my little foot. I have to say I'm um, I'm gonna have to pop this little critter up here while I'm doing this. That is a tiny little Pac-Man ghost pin cushion that holds your sewing machine needles when you change them. Look how cute it is. Is it not the cutest thing you've ever seen? And it's from Inspired Leather Co, which is Mari from Mari Sews. Um, company that she has set up and she sent me one of those and it is adorable and I believe that she will be restocking them on her website very very soon if she hasn't done already um so I'm just going to box out these other two corners This is the only thing with Benina. When you've been using another machine, you're constantly looking for the button, uh, for the lever on the back of it to lower the press foot, but there isn't one because it doesn't have a press foot lever. It just has a button because it automatically drops and lifts when you finish and start a seam, which can throw you sometimes. Especially when you've been using the other one, which I was earlier, because I wanted to, um, I didn't want to ram too many layers through my vanilla. Although, to be fair, she handles it pretty well. I'm going to spin that round because I forgot to back stitch at the end, so I'm just going to double stitch over the top of the whole thing. I'm going to trim my threads. And that is basically the box pouch. So I'm just going to trim off those excess threads with my little snippers. These snippers, if you haven't got a pair of spring-loaded snippers like these, invest in some, the best thing ever. I've got about three pairs of them. Um, you can get them in 
other varieties as well. You don't have to have chewed ones. Um, so, those are my box corners. So I've boxed all four corners of my pouch, which has made it 3D rather than it being flat. I'm going to turn it through. There's my little tablet out of my leftover um, Tula homemade fabric. I'm going to get the back end of my tweezers, not the sharp end because you'll end up pushing it straight through. And I'm just going to go round all four corners and I am going to just poke out that binding, not the binding, sorry, I'm just going to poke out the corners of each side. And basically that is the end of the bag. So I'm just going to poke out these corners and then I will zip it up and show you what it looks like. So that is your little boxy bag. That is the beautiful Tudor Sunrise lining. And then when you zip it up, you can hold the little tab. And that is your little Tudor bag. Well, it doesn't have to be chewy, it could be any fabric, but if you did want any, Elephant in my Handbag has got some of the Daydreamer left and they've also got the new Tiny Beasts, um, which has just been launched and it just makes a cute little thing. So you can pop your tweezers in, you can put your snippers in it, you can put your tape measure in, you can use it. Put your Wonder Clips in. It's just a great little bag. You can use it as a pencil case for kids. It would look super cute in some little children's theme fabric. And because the one, this particular one that I have made only uses a 10 inch square, two 10 inch squares, you could also use this from a fat quarter bundle um, or you could use it from some 10 inch layer cakes because they're pre-cut so it's actually the right size for you. As I say, if you wanted to make it bigger, you could quite easily oh hey up there she is um you could easily make it bigger if you wanted to so thanks for tuning in guys that is my take on the little boxy pouch and i've just put a little thing on the end there so you can grip hold of it but as i say you can use it for body yard or you can use a pre-made zip it's up to you so I just want to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and I hope that helps and I hope that if you make one, please do upload it to Instagram and tag me in it because I love seeing everyone else's makes and I will see you all soon. So from me, Mrs Benina and Mr Pac-Man Ghost, I will see you all soon. Thanks a lot. Bye.